A paintless golf ball, everybody. Wilson has just released something that I don't think anybody's ever done before. My name's Adam. I'm the owner of My Golf Spy. We've got Harry alongside here as the director of product testing. And today we are covering something pretty unique in the golf industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A paintless golf ball. My first question is, why did they make it without paint? I mean, it's just simple. It's to do with better performance. You have all of these layers within a golf ball anyway, and without paint, you're eliminating a variable. So it's one less ingredient in a recipe Correct. that makes it more complex, right? Correct, yes. Pretty obvious when you step back and think about it, less variables lead to less potential for performance issues. The second reason that they would do this uh, is because Wilson is a challenger brand, right? So how do they go about attracting people that are buying golf balls to try theirs? And this is one way you do it, you remove the paint. When you called me and told me that this was coming out, my first question is, what the hell does it look like, right? Yeah, I was the same way, but it came in and I was like, that's pretty similar to a matte looking golf ball. Yeah, I when I first heard about it, I thought it was gonna look like a rubber chicken, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> Interesting analogy. <laughs> yeah, but when it came in and I actually saw the first ones, I was impressed. Uh, that looks very close to a matte white golf yeah. ball. I actually prefer, you know, golfers are, are so used to seeing a pearl, you know, something mm -hmm. that's super polished and white, but I actually prefer the matte look. So they don't look like a rubber chicken, right? But that's straight fresh out of the box. How does a raw, unfinished, unpainted golf ball look after you hit it against a tree, hit it on a cart path, hit it out of a bunker, you know? I mean, we've got, some over there, so bring them in. All right. So we've used these with 150 shots in and out. So far, what we've seen is, yes, they do stain a little bit quicker and stain mostly, oddly enough, along the seam. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, uh, durability wise from the scratches and scuffs, I think they look really good. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. The one with paint actually came out a little bit worse inside. As Wilson said, their opinion is that the painted golf ball will actually have more durability issues than the not painted golf yes. ball. And that's because no different than your car, if it gets keyed, right, or scratched, mm -hmm. it's gonna show a scratch yeah. versus if you had a car with no paint on it. It's held out well, in my opinion. That gets me to the next thing, and that is how does this ball actually perform for golfers? Because mm -hmm. The only reason you would do this is to benefit a golfer, right? Correct. So what are the claims that Wilson Golf is making? Uh, so there's a couple. The Model R claims to have lower launch and higher spin compared to the painted version. This will give you more stopping power on approach shots, but slightly shorter drives. Wilson also claims the paintless ball has better dispersion. So Harry, you said you've hit 150 shots indoors and outdoors, right? Correct. And that's with both balls? Yep. Yep. So we used it with our driver, wedge, and a wet wedge. And we went through the same protocols like we do in a most wanted test. So we know it is gonna be protocol driven. So let's start with drivers. I know the first thing that every golfer wants to know is how far does this ball fly when I hit it with a driver, right? The raw ball, which is the painless golf ball, I carried it 298 compared to the one with paint at 300. So that's a two yard difference. Okay. So it's not that much of a difference. Launching, it's pretty much exactly the same. It's 11.5 to 11 degrees of launch. So not really lower, but you know. It's, this is exactly the same in my opinion. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna make too much difference. Now spin wise, the raw span 2538 and the one with paint was 2330. It's pretty complicated. So we though. didn't see those two things really pop to the surface for us, but you, Not know, really. you might in your own testing, right? Um, so now let's go to wedge results, right? Yep. So let's just cover what most golfers care most about, and that's spin when it comes to wedge. Because if you, if you have spin, you're a good golfer, you know? <laughs> that's right. Everybody loves to suck yeah, it back. Everyone ball. loves to suck it back. Yeah. So which ball spun more, the raw or the painted? So the Wilson raw ball spun 11,869 compared to 12,011 revolutions. So less spin with the raw ball. Less spin on ideal conditions. Okay. So let's cover what is, I think, the most interesting part of the wedge testing we do. Yes. And that's wet wedge testing, yep. right? Everybody goes out there and plays golf in wet conditions, do in the morning. There's always a little bit of wetness on the ball, a little bit on your club. Not every golfer cleans their clubs. So 
A more real world scenario is having a little bit of water introduced to the equation. What we learned from our ball and wedge testing last year was that matte balls do not spin as much when they are wet. This is not a matte ball, but it is a paintless ball. So I'm really interested to find out how much spin was lost or gained when we added water to the scenario. This is kind of scary. The raw Wilson, the backspin, all right, you ready for it? 56.32. So we had a 50% drop off. About 50%. When you hit a raw ball with a wedge shot and there is a little bit of water introduced between the ball and the club. That's a, that's a big drop off, right? So you've gone from hitting a wedge, it usually takes about 10,000 RPM to spin a ball back on a green. We are now into the seven, eight iron spin rate yeah. Right? Then you relate that to terms that everyone understands. It's now rolling out for three yards Correct. instead of pitching and stopping where it is. And now you introduce strokes gained into that. And the further you are away, the less percentage of you holding that putt. One thing I do want to mention is last year's test, we noticed that when you add variables like the water into a face, launch increases. Correct. Okay. Ball slides up the face. Slides little. up the face, exactly. So like the results of our earlier test, the raw ball launched significantly higher than the painted ball. We went from a 32.6 to 38 degrees of launch. Wow. That's scary. Six degrees. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. So, you know, something that looks very similar, right, to the golfer. Painted golf ball, matte golf ball, they look the same. Most golfers would buy a dozen of these and think, well, they're the same, right? They're not the same. This ball is gonna perform differently than a ball that has paint on it. Some of those will be good for your game. Some of them might not, right? All right, so the big question is, Harry, you know, making a golf ball is one thing, selling them and have people, you know, committing to buying them is another. So the question to you is, would you game this ball? I think I would, if it wasn't for the wet wedge test. Yeah, I mean. That was the big kicker. Performance everywhere else looked pretty good. Yeah. The wet wedge results were concerning. Right? Very much, yeah. Especially for a good golfer like yourself. If you're just out there as a recreational golfer having fun, that might be a little bit different. But if you're out there trying to shoot the lowest score possible in a competitive round. You, you know, need every advantage you can get. Yep. And not and a disadvantage. I agree. Yeah. Really cool concept. Wilson Golf Ball comes out with a paintless golf ball. Definitely piqued my interest, piqued our interest yep. here. Enough to do a quick little test on it. So I want to ask you, would you play a paintless golf ball? Let us know in the comments section below.